British are coming! The British are coming! Oh, well, I guess they're already here. Um, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. What's up, guys? This is Heiss, and today we're looking at a little bit of a fun mod here in Railroader, developed by a friend of the channel, Pancakes themselves. Say hello. Hi, yes. It's, uh, it's good to be back on the channel. Usually you guys only see me in live streams, but uh, today we got a little little surprise for you. A, a little fun thing, and goodness, I mean, I literally joined your server and just went, Oh my god, it's so cute! <laughs> so tell everyone about these lovely little British Ophoros. Uh, well, I am no British historian, so that is why we have a third with us today, my good friend Battleship, who is also co-author on this mod. Ah! Uh, as our patented British friend, he is uh, more well-spoken in the histories of these little guys. I was gonna say, I didn't know if we had Battleship in here for any other reason than to make fun of the British, but here we are, and welcome! <laughs> good evening! Y yes, it's quite late over there, thank you for staying up for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, I'll pay for it tomorrow. We appreciate you. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. But yes, this is Frozen. It's a little o uh, O4O 0 that was built in the very late uh, 19th century. I believe it was 1896, 97? So it's, it's pretty old. The real one was originally built for... Well... Primarily their industrial engine, so it's the, the actual engine itself has kind of gone all over the place. It's worked in loads of places. It's gone from Wales to London. It, it has worked in many places, and it's still around today in working order. So if, you, if you're in Britain, you can go see it. That's if, awesome. You, you'll need a magnifying glass. It's it's really small. I was gonna say <laughs> it is so neat to see something of British loading cage here in Railroader, and it's kind of dwarfed by. Oh my God! You gave it Anything. an American tender. <laughs> it's fine it's fine uh that um. is delightful <laughs> yes it is quite small but uh it's neat to know that uh, one of them actually runs is it was it a class of multiple locomotives or is it just one singular locomotive well it was built by avonside they pretty much built it to order for the person who was buying it so it there's ones like it but there is not a distinctive class sure okay cool and it I can... is very much one person wanted something a little differently, one person wanted something a little bit different. It's just, it, there's so many variants, it's hard to say it's one thing or another. Gotcha. That makes sense. So I see that there are a couple variants, and then I also see, of course, that some of the necessary things for Railroader are still there, such as the, uh, <laughs> the class lamps and the dynamo and everything, which I imagine are probably not historic to the, uh, the locomotive itself. But, no! Uh, <laughs> but I see we have footboards on this one, and then this one's actually got more like a, an American-style road pilot, which is kind of neat. And then, uh, yeah. and then, yeah. So, so tell me about specifically these kind of different flavors and uh, options that we've got here. Yeah. Well, perhaps. Would you? You, you go. You go. Okay. So, a couple different flavors we've got is I decided, or uh, well, together we decided we wanted different like physical variants of the engine to kind of mimic what a what an ordering process would look like as an industrial engine you know so uh you know much to battleships dismay i put footboards on our you know our main tank engine and then uh with our tender variant i chose to take more of a festeniog-esque type of route with it so, if you've seen the Fasiniog Little England classes, they're technically O for O tank engines. However, they do also have a little, uh, a little tender. We can call it. Uh, essentially, it's just a tiny little coal cart to give them that extra coal capacity to continue doing the runs that they do. And then, ultimately, they are. Each variant's more or less the same, you know, besides one having footboards, the other having the more American pilot, you know, buffers, not buffers, uh, rivet details, so on and so forth. Um, ultimately, like, placement of a lot of these items are the same on these engines, uh, but it did, the answer's kind of in the details. If you uh, want to walk around to the rear of the 
uh, tank engine before you. I, I was flying around a ton with the fly cam because that's who I am when I play this game. Um, I, I realize I left my character in the gauge. Bad heist. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yes, the rear of the engine, it's got a bucket. Dear God. It does have a bucket. Uh, a little, we haven't implemented it yet. But uh, supposedly this is an extra 500 tons of coal or pounds of coal. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> it's it's British buckets used with Welsh magic. Um, I was yeah, going to say so... that's some Thomas and the Magic Railway kind of stuff. The special coal. <laughs> it's very very dense. It's a very strong but, handle yeah. you've got on the bucket. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's vibranium. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so details are kind of, or the devil's in the details, really. So between the bucket, the coal shovel, and, you know, the air tank placement. Right. Uh, initially, the shovel and bucket were not there, so we had a uh, center-mounted rear lamp. However, uh, ultimately, with the design choice of adding the bucket and the shovel, I think the offset lamp actually fits it quite a lot better. It looks cool, and it feels it feels British, despite that being obviously a pile national, <laughs> you know, <Right>. big American <laughs> headlight. Which is uh, seeing that the angle cock, the brake hose, the knuckles, uh, and then you know going on the other end and being like, oh yeah, buffers, right? A uh, little interesting, but of course you know it's made to make make it work in an American game, so makes sense. Uh, going with the theme of made to work in American game, um, not necessarily my modeling choice. Thank you, Battleship. It is a yeah. four-cylinder as modeled. It's a four-cylinder. Uh, yeah. The idea. Uh, well, if you want to go back into uh, the fly mode around it and look under the engine as best as you can. Oh, uh, I, I do. I thought I thought those were the valves set inboard. No. Yeah. I... <laughs> no. Why would you? Why? 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 The idea was was because the Great Western over here is well known for its four-cylinder engines. Oh god, you, you did the cranks and the main rods and everything! <laughs> oh! Well known for having for its small cylinder engines, and I thought, well, this is a great western engine, technically, so why not bring one of the things it's most well known for in the game? God's strongest 040. It totally uh, wouldn't work in real life. Yeah, I was gonna but, say, oh, it's a pity yeah. that, uh, it's, oh my god. So you, yeah, and you've got the, the quartering proper so that every set is 90 degrees off. I hadn't noticed that. The t outside crank pin on the engineer's side, uh, sorry, the fireman's side, because we're over in the wrong side of the pond, uh, on the fireman's side, and drive. is up, and then the, the, the engineer's side crank pin is down, and then you've got the, uh, the two underneath in, in front and back. That is... That is delightful. It's a shame we can't roll engines over in this game because I want to stare at that. <laughs> yes, it'd be great. Uh, but yeah, so through there, uh, with that being said, uh, typically speaking, uh, the real life example makes around 11,000 pounds of tractive effort. Oh my God. Through, uh, big, big little low for o. Uh, our virtual recreation of the engine does about 24,000. God's strongest 040. Got it. Yes. <laughs> uh, That's very fun. So are they all four cylinder? Or is that an option? Uh, it, they are currently all four, all four cylinder. Um, gotcha. Eventually, as we work through the mod and the kinks and everything, we are looking to add even more variants. And uh, I have sent you a couple cursed versions already. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> none that I am going. None that I am going to spoil as of yet. Okay. But, good. Uh, well, we'll have yeah, to. Kind of... We'll have to get one of these on the ES and DT just for the memes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, that is absolutely the vibe we are going for. It's uh, essentially I I thought about creating British mod stock for this game, mainly because it, pe people get irrationally emotional about it and I, it, to me that's the funniest thing <laughs> you know um, um it, it is quite funny because um th that is something that you experience in preservation sometimes i have met many a chief mechanical officer that you know made to, made a decision to do something we're gonna do it this way because it's gonna piss off the foamers <laughs> so that's always funny i do think i might have to teach you a thing or two about air compressor piping but that's okay uh, absolutely i will uh, i will keep those comments to myself for the video <laughs> yeah, yeah it uh 
that was probably one of the first things I did for this, and I haven't gone back and touched it, whatever. I got you. Uh, oh, I'll walk you through so it. No big deal. That is, that, that is why, uh, oh, well, never mind. Piping does exist. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So, let's, uh, let's go ahead and pop in. We can talk a little bit more about it. Uh, I was going to say, I, wanna, I wanted to see the cab and, and uh, get one of these absolutely. running. You've, you've got three different flavors. Uh, which one should we run? Uh, well, we can go ahead and... T would you like to take, uh... Let's see. One of the... At the other end is a blank, uncolored version of Ooh. the tender version. Okay. Well, let's let's give uh, that a look over. Oh, I forgot that there's disclaimer. cabooses in this game. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> are those? We don't... Yeah. Um, small this Sorry, the, the brake still... van. The guards van. Sorry. Yes. The break uh, we are that. working on some texture issues. Uh, full disclaimer. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it ultimately comes out to be the same as the tank engine. I've been flying around with my UI turned off, and I'm like, I'm control clicking this. What? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Customization. Yeah. So, well, of course, we're gonna. We have to give it uh, something really, 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 really silly to put on this because. Um, the British locomotive is lovely, but it's got some American things, but it really does just need a little bit of that so in its life. Died. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, what um sound <clears throat> is like. It it's sorry, it should sound more <laughs> Sorry for everyone's <laughs> eardrums. Um, but I mean that's probably what it sounds like. Oh my goodness, so we have all the options of colors. We have all the options, my friend. What, like what color what what color do we choose now remember you can color the engine the tender is also separately colorable oh interesting <laughs> there's too many choices I, I like that kind of uh, nice teal i suppose that is um that used to be my favorite color when i was a kid but anyway and then <laughs> goodness <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why, why not yellow and works. teal? It's it 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 it, it works. Every Ish. child. I mean, it it it's pseudo uh, corporate VR. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Oh God. So we've got who? We've got the. Why, why are there two handles on your rig, mate? What's going on here? A lot of uh, great Western tank engines did have two handles for reasons that actually escaped me, and I just thought it looked cool. Fair enough. The cab, I mean, it's nice. I like the way that the, the piping is set up. And and then the sight glass uh, railroader could not comprehend a slanted slight sight glass from what I can see. It, did I not? Huh. No. Oh, I missed that. That's uh, <laughs> that's fine. It, the, the water is leaking out of the glass violently in a very cylindrical shape. But, I mean, that's the water in the tender anyways, so who cares? Um and then you've got yeah all the stuff you need, which all the gauges and stuff. Oh, you've got you've modeled the cute little vacuum brake handle and everything. Oh, that's fun. Goodness. All right. Well, I guess let's get this thing. Uh, let's get this thing going. Goodness, I've not actually run an engine in first person in an Eon. Um, uh, to I will another disclaimer that will be ready to fix by next update. Ah, is the uh, controls are not interactable. The throttle they should are. be. The throttle should be? It's just couple, finicky. A couple things are. Um, it has... Yeah. There we go. But, uh, <laughs> the yeah. pilot so switch. Every, just about everything in the cab is animated the way it should be. Uh, your reverser. And then you got your... So the way we... I. This was a executive decision is our train brake is our small ejector handle that's fun and our ind our independent is technically our uh shut off valve i believe that's how that cab is technically is as laid yeah. out that is delightful um, other than that yeah they're about all the same you got i believe top dead center is your boiler pressure your second to the right would be your brake gauge and then of course your speedometer is uh near that uh little cubby or cabinet i guess it's just box. a box it's just yeah. a box that they had i have no idea what to put in it it's just there <laughs> this thing is so cool and and 
so bizarre to see too the the non-quartered cranks because it's four cylinder uh that's hilarious and it's stronger than the smallest couple engines in the game too which is extra hilarious um, let's see. so we're gonna see I what I this thing can do yeah uh i believe about 40 miles an hour is where we'll get it uh best at uh it yeah it's really got it's got little drivers uh, should i be blowing through this red no yeah sure. okay <laughs> the only other train rating is already where it stopped at so perfect and i see you know there's a couple little texture and lighting things i'm sure that you're working on but this is still very much an active dev uh have you released this to the public yet uh no uh i will not announce our release date as of yet i will say it is soon tm <laughs> big tm uh, but it is just about ready for a public release where, like I said, we are actively working on a couple of these texturing issues. I'm going to try and set up our, uh, our, uh, cab, or our first person controls a little bit better, um, just because they are so hit and miss. Uh, and, uh, I believe the only thing I am missing from the cab is the firebox door animation. Gotcha. Well, it, you're getting really close and, oh my god, this thing is just genuinely adorable um <laughs> and and i don't mean that to be a patronizing way to be like haha british train small but i mean it, it, it's beautiful the the model's great of course uh I'll, I'll give you a couple little tips here and there on the things that i have noticed but uh yeah. goodness <laughs> just just a lot of fun and then seeing the the mish, mismatch of uh, americanisms is interesting it makes me think of when the uh, the scotsman came over and and they had to americanize it a little bit um, yeah, the yeah. Scotsman and I believe Repton, when that was over here, were very big inspirations for what British trains would look like with American things strapped on. Sure, sure. But uh, my horror. Uh, <laughs> yes, so Southern Railways Repton, I believe, class number being 926, is a 440 that uh, operated out of Steamtown while in, when it was in Scranton. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. So that, God, I don't recall when that came over, but that came over also with an M7 class, which ironically is an 044 tank engine. Uh, <laughs> but you know, Repton, Repton was fairly popular, you know, uh, once Steamtown was kind of like going through that, okay, we kind of got to restore everything. Uh, Repton was sold back to the UK, much to my dismay. And my utter glee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, Repton, Scotsman, uh, let's see, Cor uh, the LMS Coronation class, when that was over, was also a bit of an inspiration. They didn't quite Americanize that one as much as they did uh, with Repton and Scotsman, but it was kind of, again, going along with uh, what would a British engine look like if it was here in America and operational, and we have the answer to that, and we, uh, we brought that to a digital form. That's very, very cool. So I know that, um, of course, a couple British engines have visited, and I know things like, um, I believe, is it the Sir Nigel Gresley? Or no, it's the Dwight D. Eisenhower that's at uh, the Green Bay Museum, right? Yes. The A4. I know that we have a couple British engines in the States, but other than, you know, those sorts of things, um, are there any American engines over your way other than the ones that we shipped over during certain times of uh, perhaps uh, Splody Boy's of the violent kind well we oh, have I'm a couple of you asked mark <laughs> that uh, yeah. we have so. um we have some s160s that still run right of course those, those are actually uh, those are actually surprisingly popular with enthusiasts over here i'm pretty sure uh, including uh, the one that's being converted to burn oil <laughs> I, I am yeah very i am very excited about yeah. it uh, oh, there is there's this... also an well, there's also some S100s. I don't know if there's any running at the moment, but we do have them. Right. Several of them are currently being restored. Yeah. Is, is there anything beyond any of those export S100, S160? Absolutely. Okay, cool. There, there is one little, thing. Uh, there's uh, myself and uh, our good friend Spinoto went on a deep dive a little while ago. There is this okay. gorgeous, beautiful line out in Wales that is two, I believe, two foot gauge. Okay and has some of Baldwin exports. 
uh, one out of Brazil, if I remember correctly, and another out of South Africa. Okay. Uh, I believe, let's see, one is a 260 and the other is a 262, if I recall correctly. No, it's a Pacific and a Prairie. That is what it is. Uh, this little line, you know, they bought their first engine from a guy in England who bought it from South Africa, and he was trying to restore it and converted it to uh, one foot, 11 and three quarters. Okay. What's that le- uh, le- quarter inch less get you other than, I mean, over here it would get you past the FRA, but uh, right. <laughs> what's um, that get you over there? Ultimately, it, it didn't work out. He had to sell the engine. And uh, this little line, which is called the Brecon Mountain Railway, bought it. And at the time of when they bought it, it was a 260. So while they were doing their conversions, you know, to two foot, you know, restoring it for operation, they did convert it to be a prairie. Okay. Uh, and it has a gorgeous three chime on it. Uh, I will, I'll send you an audio clip of it after. Of course. And uh, then their second engine, which came out of Brazil, uh, I believe was a sugar cane engine. Okay. Odd about, it's odd how there are several prairies and there are Pacifics in the world not doing fast passenger work. <laughs> uh, but they bought it, they got it, they got it restored, and uh, now this little line are trying to build replicas of the Sangley River, or uh, Sangley Lake. And, uh, okay, uh, you know. yeah, yeah, the SRNRL, the two-foot stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. over east, you know, less east than Britain, of course, but east in the U.S. Right. I, uh, I, th- I want to say I'd heard something about that. Just they're trying to make uh, a replica of one of those engines. So they are doing a replica of one of the 40s, as well as a replica of the SR and RL. Um, Sandy Prairie. River and Rangeley or, Lakes, is that what it is? I believe so. If I'm remembering my two footisms um, right. Uh, essentially, this little line in the middle of Wales, which has a, by the way, a British for, uh, VBT and some other weird, like, 460, I think, tank engine. I think it is. They're like, you know what? We like our American stock, so we're going to replicate that by building a Forney and a Pacific or a Prairie. And the SRRL Prairies, I have a book somewhere where quoted to have hit 60 miles an hour on the two foot. Yeah, I've I've heard that. You know, and that's one of those things that sometimes you just wonder how accurate are some of these uh, thoughts and quotes? (laughs) Because uh, there's, if you time it out, there's a story in Little Engines Big Men, also known as Little Engines Big Lies, but anyway, yeah. there's a story of a C-16 uh, where it must have hit 90 miles an hour at one point in order to meet the schedule that they call out in the book, and it's just like, it's got 36-inch drivers. No. There's just literally no way. The the rods would have become spaghetti long before that. Right. Uh, so other than this... Uh this little road i believe and none of these class exists any further uh i believe right before world war one broke out the early greek grouping railways of the uh, united kingdom there's too many to list i'm telling like over 200 couple couple of the big three we'll call it okay had reached out to baldwin and alco at the time schenectady and they had ordered a class of 260 moguls and Initially, the first batch were definitely very American moguls. They just had a buffer beam slapped on them. But uh, during the second batch, the uh, Schenectady batch, essentially, the first batch was Baldwin, second batch was Schenectady, the uh, Midland Railway, you know, they ordered another 11. They're like, hey, we need this to be like, you know, a size. So, uh, and there are a couple plans I can share out to you. But they're cute little classes. I believe the Midland Railway examples were the 1501 and the 1511 class. But again, these were just a couple Baldwin Schenectady exports that uh, helped fill a gap in British rail history. As at the time, all of their all of their machining places were full. They were booked. You know, they ultimately were not very popular. They were gone. I believe. The first one hit the rails in 1908. The last one was gone by 1916. Hmm. 
but no. Otherwise, we we have seen a couple cases of we sent them an engine, they've sent us an engine. Sure, uh, sure, sure. I believe one of my favorite stories comes from, uh, I believe, Railfest 91 out in California. Okay. Uh, yes, I believe that's correct, because, you know, the big greats, 44, 49, 844, you know, 3985 were there. But there was one particular guest that no one expected. Okay. And it was this dinky 060 from the uh, former LNER. It was there in operation, and we were also supposedly had uh, to have one of or one of the last steam engines built by British Rail, uh, number eighty thousand, which is Duke of Gloucester or Gloucester. Gloucester. I, uh, yes. It's Gloucester. I, yeah, I caught it. Gloucester. <laughs> Gloucester in the United uh, Kingdom. It is the Duke of Gloucester. Gloucester, yes. But we were we were also supposed to have this great British Pacific, which went from scrap heat condition to, you know, they reforged a brand new third cylinder for this thing. It had rotary cam, uh, yeah, rotary cam valve gear, and it was like one of the greatest, one of the greatest engines built by VR at the time. Its only drawback was it had. A, uh, God, I'm blanking on the word. A, uh, oh, it had a, uh, basically, essentially, it had a stack from a old 1896 Great Western, uh, 060. Huh. And that was its only downfall. But, uh, we were supposed to have it for Railfest 91. Or around, around a Railfest, essentially. Nobody knows what happened, didn't show up. But, uh, yeah, no, other than that, there's not a whole lot of, uh, other engines that have come over. Right. The whole Scotsman thing kind of scared them all off. <laughs> <laughs> it, it did have that, uh, I mean, the, the story of what happened to Scotsman when it was here is, is amazing. It's something that I hope to cover on the channel at some point. Uh, you know, maybe when I do a video with, uh, with the the good twin. We've determined that uh, I'm the evil twin and Lori's the good twin, but it'd be fun. It's the one one few intersection of uh, British Railway and uh, Amer American Railroad that uh, really occurred, you know, so it'd be fun. Uh, well, not necessarily that either. Uh, before World War II had kicked off, you know, the spicy, spicy, splody boys. Yes. We had seen three other British locomotives, or three other mainstream British locomotives come over and, you know, party it out with us for a little bit, as I guess is the best way to put it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we have seen a LMS coronation class that was here for the B&O's 150th anniversary celebration. Really? I had no idea yes. about that. That's fascinating. Know. And that actually yeah. had stayed over here in the States throughout the duration of the war. Wow. I'd also like to interject, is the only British streamlined engine that has ever been to the States. Operationally. Oh, in the April. Yeah, operationally. <laughs> um... And then, I believe, a couple years before that, we had a Great Western King class, a 460. Yep, King George. I don't recall what it, that was over here for. I believe that was for some kind of centenary or for a railway. I can't recall the exact one, and but then, it was course, over there for some kind of celebration. We had a AM LMS Patriot, correct? No, a Royal, Royal Scott, Scott came over. And the that Royal was another, Scott. That was another 460. I only know uh, so about that one because I have uh, <laughs> I played Microsoft Train Simulator as a kid, and there was that one scenario where you had to help it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so th throughout history, we have had quite a few British locomotives come and go, and of course we have a couple that have stayed. Again, much to our uh, British friends' dismay, uh, like the Eisenhower. I want it back. <laughs> uh, there is that I believe a British 440 out in the Pine Creek out that way towards New Jersey. Interesting. There is also with the other the A4 in Canada, there is also a London Brighton and South Coast Railway Terrier, which, if you haven't seen them before, is quite literally one of the cutest engines that's ever been made. Uh, they it's are no 60. 
yeah, it is utterly adorable. And they're, they're wonderful little engines. <laughs> they're so cute. That is, that is delightful. So, um, I have to ask, because I've been staring at the model some more, what was the, what's the story on the tender? <laughs> I know, I know uh, you said that some well, of them had a little cold in well, kind of thing, but... N- none of them ever had tenders. The, the only variations they had was just, like, some of them were 040s, some of them were 060s. Yeah. Sometimes the, the person, the, um, the owners had, like, took an old, uh, an old coal wagon and just took some of the sides off and just threw some coal in there, but they never had a dedicated tender. This is purely a thing that was instituted for Railroader, because on its yes. own, the engine only has about 700 gallons of water and 0.5 tons of coal. So it really I was going to say, there's there's no space. I've, I fired I fired an 040 that's a little bigger than this, a Vulcan, um, just a couple weeks ago at Kentucky Steam, and it had the bunkers on the back but even then it held like maybe a ton of coal and we were yeah. working through that just running light engine all day i mean we went through a fair amount so it really would be confined to one space with this open well, kind of design on yeah. the back end and yeah had we done a uh i had set up whittier for us to switch out gave you gave you options okay. uh you would have seen essentially how limited you would have been um i've done a couple test saves throughout testing with this you know essentially trojan as a tank engine is really happy with doing one round trip of a passenger train and then going up grabbing logs from the log camp and coming back down that would be before you would need to refill on water and Uh, is the uh the water consumption rate something that you have uh control over as a mod author or is it just based on some calcs in railroader itself i I believe it's based on some calculations done by railroad. Okay, because I'm watching the tender water level, and it is, uh, to quote my good friend of mine, Leighton Moreland, it is going down faster than a fat kid on a seesaw. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, if, if we're going, like, full ham on the throttle, Trojan is very happy at about 25% cut off. 25%. Yeah, we're wide open. I had it at about 40, but we'll put it at uh, 25%. But I mean, it's doing more than a gallon a second. It might be doing yeah, two gallons a second, and that means that it's somewhere on the order of 7,000 gallons an hour, which is uh, four times faster than what uh, even 491, our big big engine, would do over here at the museum. But so at, the, I... at the same time, like it's gamified for the sake of the game right so it doesn't right. have to be thermodynamically accurate but yeah but yeah no absolutely and if it's something something that later gets added to our control where we can play with it i would absolutely do that um because yeah, it'll make it no, much but... much more usable in the the constraints of things but yeah just the little tank engine yeah so i understand the tender is more so just a, a gameplay extension kind of thing then huh yeah absolutely and Realistically speaking, if I did the tender, again, it would have only just been a simple coal, like extra coal carrying vessel. Sure. Uh, it, it looks yeah. like it. it's a tender that's already in game or something that you've modified, if I'm uh, correct in my guess. No, it, I okay. believe I may have potentially shared it a long time ago in the high score. Um, you know, being a 3D modeler at heart, I've entered a couple train based 3D modeling things and. One of the contests I entered was create or like turn a tank engine into a tender engine or like, you know, not getting into specifics, essentially make something into something it was never, it never was as prototypical. And I said that. Uh, So this tender is actually with a little bit of basis based on one of the great Western call it tenders. Um... I had created this model uh, actually for a two foot three inch engine uh, and kind of scaled it up. So that's why a couple things may or may not line up. But, Interesting. Yeah. That's fun. But yeah. I, I just see and, the gigantic trucks and I'm like, uh, that, yeah, that, that, uh, that, those must be default railroad or something. <laughs> thank, thank you to our good friend, uh, Auntie. She had actually that, not that I have had a chance to implement yet, had made some custom trucks for Trojan. So those will eventually be on the model. Yeah, because w- when I started seeing it, I was like, oh, cool, he made a tender version. And then I looked at it some more, and I was like, monster oh, trucks. my God, the, it literally <laughs> is monster trucks. 
Uh, so some trucks on that, and that'll be just splendid, I think. Yeah. So. Um, I did almost as recently as we'll call it Sunday. Uh, I don't know when this will release, but Sunday as of filming. Uh, I'm planning on putting this out tomorrow because why not? Cool. Uh, if it that's did okay. Not actually, <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. Uh, the. Uh, drop deck of the tender was not actually level with the footplate of the locomotive. And again, that was kind of one of those holdovers from the initial design idea of it's, it, it, it's just an extra cart. It, it's there for fuel capacity. You know, they wasn't necessarily a functional thing until I kind of cave. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll level with it. <laughs> <laughs> And I see uh, uh, somebody's whistle tagging at me out of the Trojan here in Whittier, and I, that that's basically the the version of the real engine, right? Yes, yes, that's yes, cool. It is. Um, and it's striking in that green. That's beautiful. Uh, British, or uh, I'm sorry, Great Western Brunswick Green, which it's been debated on if the color is actually called Brunswick or if that was just one of those like trade magazine foamer type thing sure like, this is what we wanted to call it there are so uh, many of those that exist and the more the more you learn about writing the more of those you find but it was it is a very striking deep kind of foresty green which i if i traced it back was the initial name for the color but interesting it, it yeah. is a very great uh, great lush deep green and it is one of the things I will compliment the Great Western Railway on is their choice. <laughs> oh my of God, green. he said it. He did. He did. He said the thing. <laughs> he said something nice about the Great Western. I, I can die happy. I was gonna say. So, you know, obviously, I was joking about British and uh, engineer side, fireman side being swapped, and then you said, "Oh yeah, it's right hand drive," and we have not addressed it. Great Western. <laughs> they were right hand drive because they liked to do everything backwards from everyone else shrug uh tell us a little bit about the great western while we sho shove these cars up into the spur here well the great western out of all the big four is most notable for being the one that's in my view the most different pancakes will quite happily sit here all day and rant and rave about what he dislikes about the great western but <laughs> we uh we, we do not have the remaining lifespan for that uh, essentially the great western not only being you know probably the most prevalent in railway preservation over in the uk oh they God, were so. at the at the formation of big four which uh happened around 1923 which is where all the super tiny over 200 railways merged into big or four big companies Great Western at the time was already kind of doing that, and they were the oldest of the big four. Um, gotcha. They led, all, or they did a lot of the leading work towards like what modern locomotive standardization would look like. Um, and this is, of course, before the British Railway Standard locomotives. Um, so, uh, much to my dis discontent, uh, a lot of their locomotives did indeed share a lot of common cylinder sizes, you know, different common tenders, you know, driver patterns, sizes, boyer classes, and that's why a lot of modern Great Western locomotive rebuilds or new builds are almost relatively cheaper than, say, what the Blue Bellet newest Atlantic was, because of Great Western standards they could keep reusing or reshaping whatever part they need to fit the engine. That makes sense. That's interesting. There's a lot of cool standardization that goes on in British things that we don't tend to see too often over here, though. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, I was busy flicking switches as much as I could to giggle and look at animations of switches. Um, and uh, thought I had it set properly, but I didn't. So anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's not too common that we get parts sharing over here. I mean, obviously the Penzi did that with a couple classes and, and some of the USRA stuff did that, but not near to the extent the Brits did. 
Um, and, you know, helping the viewers out and also helping out me, I can guess three of the big four when you talk about the big four. I'm not sure who the fourth is, and I'm also not sure I'm correct on my four guesses, or my three guesses, rather. Go for it. So you have the LNER, um, yeah, you have the LMS, yeah. you have the Great Western, Yeah. what's the other one? <laughs> oh, that yeah. that is my personal favorite, the Southern. Which, oh, that's right. The, the, just, just the Southern Railway. That's right. Yeah, they mainly dealt with London, so that was a lot of commuter stuff there, and the South of England, so a lot of the holiday, the holiday spots and stuff. And ironically enough, the Southern was actually the most successful of the big four because it actually shockingly made money. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're if you're mostly dealing with London, I'm sure it's like big population mm. center, easy traffic, all the stuff. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. But yeah, the uh, the Great Western being right-hand drive uh, is giggle-worthy. So, <laughs> made uh, I'm sure wow. that made things fun and interesting when they did eventually. You know, everything turned into BR, right? So, uh, so the way after pre uh, nationalization happened, uh, most of the big four were actually ended up being split into five, six regions, if I recall correctly. Battleship. I believe it was about five. Yes. Um. So a lot of stuff kind of ended up staying in its in its re, uh, region as built, and then a lot of the standard type locomotives we are built, you know, also were built in some of these regions, so they never really left their regions. It wasn't until about 19, I believe 1964, when the Southern region, which was formerly the Southern Railway Network, had merged with the Western region which was, you know, self-explanatorily Great Western. Uh, so it was a lot of intermingling at that rate. And, and at that point, you could see a steam locomotive anywhere, know where it is, and be like, oh, that's not supposed to be here. Uh, Interesting. One of, my, one of my very favorite stories about this time during BR is during when... British Network had carrots, something we never necessarily had nor needed here in the States, as we kind of went more with the Malay type, um, or the Malay, or Malay type layout, I should say. Um, but this is about 1955. This is when the UK's most powerful locomotive, a 280082, one of the LNER, or the only LNER U1, the LMS Garrett's, which were 260062s, and the Midland Railway 0010. Uh, both Garrett's got stuck because they both ran out of steam. Uh, Licky Incline, though not as steep as some of our more prevalent grades here, for a British locomotive was very taxing. And so both these Garrett's, you know, powerful Garrett's they were, stall on this. I believe what was it? One in, one in forty-two. One in uh, which hell was this? Uh, Licky. Uh, that was a one in thirty something, I believe. The steepest hill, the steepest mainline hill we have and in the country here. Essentially, the one of the oldest Otenos in history and in British Rail history was the one to save. Them. <laughs> now, <laughs> this. This was part of the, uh, I believe, what, the... It was part of the LMS, and BR it was took actually, over. It was originally built by the Midland, Midland yeah. Railway. BR took over. All the Garrett's and the o they went away. Uh, eventually, this hill did come to be, ended up banked by, and I quote, two o six o pannier tank engines. And they trialed a haul, which hauls are incredibly wide locomotives at the cylinders. And unfortunately, but and it's another 460, as the Great Western did as standard at that point, tore up the uh, platforms on the line. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, See? Essentially, it all boils down to everything's Great Western. That's that's very funny, and it's hilarious to hear you say very wide at the cylinders. And I go, yeah, no, 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 just just no. I mean, I, look, but, look, I know, I know, I know. Four ninety one. I it, know. It is wide for the British. 
but but it is wide for the british yes but yes <laughs> load load engage and all that stuff well, uh, Pancakes Battleship, thank you guys so much for your knowledge, your expertise. It's been super fun to get a little bit ner more nerdy and deep dive on a little bit of some British Railway things uh, for a topic for video. Obviously, the mod, super, super cool. The locomotives are beautiful. Just a couple last things for you to polish off on them, uh, and then they'll be ready. So, uh, you know, let me know when they release, and of course, I will, I'll post an announcement when they do, but goodness... These engines are fantastic, and uh, I want one. So thanks so much for joining us. Awesome. Thank you for having us. We are very excited for this to release. Uh, a lot of lot of small issues will be fixed by the excuse me by the time it is ready to release. Obviously, all mods are always work in progresses. So for real, there will, be, yep. there will always definitely be a fix or two with every update. Of course. Well, thank you so much for making a wonderful mod, and thank you so much for sharing your expertise. And to all of you watching, thank you so much for watching. We will catch you all next time.